In the heart of Vancouver sits the Georgia Hotel, once a venerable watering hole for UBC students, judges, lawyers, and Shaughnessy matrons. The Georgia is now refurbished and more opulent, and it has a new dining space called Hawksworth. Rare prime rib has been replaced with a uh, trendier fare. The new restaurant is described as hot and very, very sexy. David Hawksworth is the chef owner at the helm of Hawksworth. It is my pleasure to welcome executive chef David Hawksworth to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hello. I like that. Hot, 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 and very, very sexy. Yeah, like is. all the people yeah. who work in the kitchen. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I know you've told me this before. How did you get into the business of the food business Oof. in the beginning? In the beginning, uh, way back when, um, I was always interested in food. And, and when I was in high school, I had a part-time job, and um, I appreciated you know, good food mm -hmm. uh, for, some, for some reason. And, uh, and then when I, I started working at uh, the Fish House at Stanley Park, which was... Um, owned by Audrey Scalbania. Mm -hmm. I just met some really charismatic people and finished high school and and uh, and I thought it was it was just very interesting. Every day was different. And uh, I know at one point in your youth you wanted to be a firefighter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some uh, there's some pictures out there of me with uh, with uh, in the West Van with some. Uh, but within all the fire trucks and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah, that was uh, an ambition. Yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. But well, I'm sure you fight the odd fire in the kitchen. Yes. Or do yeah. you anymore? Uh, well, now, what does now exact it's all chef about do. Well, it's all about putting out fires and just sort of seeing them ahead of time, and just making sure mm -hmm. that uh, you know it's a it's a, a raging machine that sort of needs to be. Um, you know, just make sure that it's going in the right direction the whole time. So sure. it's, uh, there's so many things that can pull it, veer it off course. Uh, well, having been uh, chef of the year in this city for uh, many years and mm. uh, the head haunch at West Restaurant, you had quite a reputation. Yeah. So uh, people were expecting a lot when you said, you know what? Well, I thought they all forgot. They didn't <laughs> because uh, it was the question on yeah. the street in the foodie circles. Mm. When is that Hawksworth going to open this restaurant? When's the Rosewood Georgia going to be done? Yeah. And then when is the restaurant going to be open? Well, alas, alack. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was there was a lot of pressure. There was, uh, I mean, there was a it was a bit of a wait for sure, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I knew we were onto a good thing. Uh, spent a lot of time uh, with the developers Delta Land and with uh, you know the designers Alexander Munch, and uh, you know they put so much time and, and passion into it. And I knew that you know once we get open, it's it's going to mm -hmm. be unbelievable, and it. Uh, well, you weren't born in 1927, but I think the hotel was, and mm. I think they built the whole hotel for something like 1.5 mil. I don't know what the kitchen <laughs> cost, <laughs> but Pretty probably close. To close. That. <laughs> yes. So yeah. take me on a tour, kind of yeah. a virtual tour of uh, the essence of this restaurant. I, I was in yesterday, so okay. I had a little peek. Yeah, I mean, the bar is, uh, you know, starting uh, starting at the bar. It's we I've taken everything out of what you know kind of normally goes in a bar. Now, nowadays, you know, so there's no cappuccino machine. There's no. Uh, it is purely a bar. Um, uh, great uh, people making cocktails. Uh, Brad Stanton's uh, the bar manager, mm -hmm. lounge, uh, lounge manager there. He makes phenomenal uh, cocktails. So a special uh, Georgia cocktail by any chance? Yeah, or he just unearthed uh, a straight at, uh, martini. Yeah, well, he Robert unearthed a, a recipe from 1945 and kept all the original ingredients and then just slightly modified the quantities of it. And uh, I think we've sold um, thousands of them already. Um, they're just, you know, they go down way too quickly. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, when I immigrated to Vancouver, it was the only restaurant in town. Well, one of the only. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody went to the Georgia. If you had a birthday or a fancy something, yeah. Georgia Hotel. Yeah. Everybody's got a, a story about it. Everybody that's for sure. does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Grace McCarthy had her flower shop there, and Webster worked out of the Georgia. And yeah. Uh, those of us who, who go back a bit will all <laughs> tell you a million stories. But yeah. back to the revitalization of this hotel. Tell me about the artsy part. I saw a Rodney Graham on the wall. Yeah, Rodney would uh, would dine at West kind of like four or five times a week sometimes. And uh, mm -hmm. I sort of, you know, became friends with him. And I, I had this idea when I worked back in the UK was Marco, Pierre White, and Damien Hurst kind of got together yes. and, and did Coavadis. And, and, um, and I thought, you know, if I ever get it together, I, I'd like you know, to um, have Rodney uh, do something in, a, in, in one room. So I approached him about it, and um, we've got a 35-foot uh, piece uh, called yes. Psychomania, which is based on a, uh, a zombie movie. Quite fitting. 
It's really beautiful, <laughs> even though it's psychomania, yeah. and sometimes uh, hungry patrons can be a bit psycho. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes the odd waiter can be <laughs> a bit chef. off. Or the <laughs> chef, I hear tell. Yeah, I so, uh, and then we're also, we're working on a, some, some more art for the, uh, for the bar right now, so I'm okay. looking, hopefully uh, that'll happen. Local artists, week. is that important to you? Uh, well, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to get somebody, well, hopefully some Damien Hurst. So, uh, wow. Yeah, that would be, uh, that's going to hopefully happen the next couple of weeks. Damien Hurst, that's yeah. important. Yeah. An artist, an important artist. Uh, and I saw a Brian Bolton, beautiful yeah. Brian Bolton uh, of you. <laughs> yeah, not naturally something I'd want to do, but my, you know, my part, uh, business partner said, oh, you've got to see this. And I'm like, oh, you know, really, you know. And, um, and then uh, they showed me some, some of the work and I said, okay, well, you know, let's yeah. have a look. And uh, it took him four months and it's painstaking. It's done by, uh, you know, he took, took a photograph and then d did it by hand by graphite. Yes. And uh, it's, it, it's, and you can be, you know, three inches away from it. And it looks I know. Like, He's uh, a brilliant artist. Like a photograph. His uh, boy series was spectacular. Yeah. Why didn't I buy one? Well, I guess I better get on it. Yeah, you should. Yes, I should. So uh, back to the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, the menu, figuring it all out. Well, it's it's very seasonal, and so we want to keep uh, we want to show off as much local products as possible, um, and you know food basically tastes a lot better if it's, it hasn't traveled as far. You know, if you're getting stuff from Australia, then it's you know it's knackered by the time it gets here. Right. So it's um, uh, you know spot prawns are just coming off the menu now because the commercial season's finished. Um, you know, salmon is prevalent right now. The I mean. Yeah, it's ever ever evolving. Mm. Octopus, we've gone on there now, so it's uh, really yeah. octopus. Mm. So, uh, do we grow octopi? <laughs> They're out there. <laughs> They're uh, out there. Yeah. So you know, when they go uh, out for uh, spot prawns, the uh, octopus get uh, caught up in that, and mm. so um, it's a good way of using a bycatch. Really? Yeah. What about uh, abalone? Uh, you can get Day some name. farmed from uh, from California. We don't have any on the menu right now, mm. but uh, yeah, it's, you can get farmed from mm -hmm. from there. But yeah, it was very prevalent along the coast here. But uh, you know, they don't reproduce very quickly, and they uh, you can wipe out a a bay and and you know in a mm -hmm. day, and, and that's it. It's gone. And basically sure, they that's were endangered for a while, yeah. I know, and you were not supposed to bring them home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the mix, uh, putting. Uh, this together, for mm -hmm. instance, tell me what goes through your brain, yeah, your well, creative um, brain. You know, there's a few of us in the ki uh, kitchen, uh, Christian and myself, who's uh, Christian Eli, um, you know, organizes the kitchen, and we'll talk about what we uh, want to see on the menu, what, uh, you know, uh, people are wanting. So something like this, we're using a uh, Oyama uh, prosciutto, so it's a free-ranged um, organic uh, Oyama pork. from Granville Island? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so, um, yeah, well, they'll... I think it's about cured for about a year and dried, and then uh, we have some smoked buttermilk, um, like it's a panzanella, like a bread salad. So we'll use uh, day old focaccia, um, some shaved Smart. fennel. Smart budget. Uh, yep, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole key. Some grilled pear, and mm. then um, and then some ramps. And so ramps are an East Coast uh, wild leek, uh, really? and they're yeah they're very kind of you know strong garlicky flavor. So what we do is pickle them. So it adds some acidity and makes it uh, a pickled ramp. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> uh, so it's like a leek yep. from the east coast. Mm -hmm. Grows in the ground. Yep, like a leek, like it's an a very onion. very short season. They they last for about maybe uh, I don't know uh, five weeks. Six How did weeks. you discover ramps? Uh, well, they're really popular in New York, and so you know if you ever if okay. you're there that time of the year, they're on every menu everywhere. So you know you you go there, and, mm -hmm. you know ramps are everywhere. So then, okay, well. What do you do with them, right? So out on the tops, we'll make a puree because they're you know beautiful green, right. and then these the the base right here um, will pickle. And as they get a little bit bigger, um, you know it's. And if you don't pickle them, what, can you use them in soups or something? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, really? I mean they're somewhat expensive. Yeah, I mean you know if you could use them for a soup, but they're right. uh, we got I think probably you know three hundred pounds of them, and so we had to do something with them, right? Mm -hmm. So. Pickling them as one way is uh, when you pickle a ramp, mm. add a little vinegar. What? Vinegar, sugar, uh, salt, and then uh, you know add, add some mustard seeds, some yeah. thyme, garlic, that type of thing. And then put it through the special machine. Is that a mandolin? To uh, make no, it all we'll just pretty, slice that one. Just slice yeah. it. Okay. Now, a s smoked buttermilk. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You see it on a few menus here and there. Um, and uh, Christian was uh, came up with that one where. Uh, 
you know, what we'll do is, uh, you know, warm up the buttermilk with, with some acidity. It kind of splits out, and then, um, and then we have a, a polyscience smoking gun, and so mm -hmm. we can um, add our chips to it, and then it'll just infuse that smoke flavor. That's wow. quite interesting. That's a lot of work, David. Yeah, well, that's you what know. it's about in the kitchen. That's that, what makes it interesting. Well, it is so pretty too. Yeah. Not only does it taste good, mm -hmm. because you you say you use local finest ingredients, interesting ingredients. Do you travel a lot uh, to New York and Paris and around the world? Uh, not as much as I'd like. Ideas? But, uh, no, I did. Uh, you know, quite a few years ago, mm -hmm. did a lot of traveling, and over the years, been uh, uh, fortunate enough to to eat in you know. Uh, all over well, and you worked and in Italy. Europe, right? Yeah, I was there for ten years. So ten years, so you picked was, up a lot there. Yeah, but you didn't meet Elvis, and you didn't meet Frank Sinatra, and now you have the ghost of Elvis and Sinatra I know. roaming around. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's great. I, I, it's funny because you know, six years ago, or even you know, kind of longer than that, that uh, that restaurant was closed. There was nothing there, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew that you know, or I had a, a gut feeling that if we could get open there, it would be. We'd be good. So it was, um, you know, it was a dream come true to right. actually uh, to look out across the art gallery and six lanes of traffic and just busy, bustling Vancouver. Sure. And you also don't want it to be too opulent so that people feel intimidated. No. You want it to be beautiful. I yeah. mean, I'm putting words in your mouth, but <laughs> does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I don't want to be that special occasion restaurant. I want people to. I mean, it is in a way, but it, at the same time, it's, uh, you know, you. We have people coming two or three times a week, so it's uh, sure. So if you're kept... staying in the hotel, can you stay in the hotel? Or is it just residences now? No, the hotel is uh, hotel fully still functioning now. So, still yeah. functioning. Yeah. The Rosewood, I thought it was. Yep. Rosewood, Georgia hotel, the Rose, but you yeah. can live there too. Yeah, the private residences. So uh, mm. there's a few left if you'd like to buy one. Oh, not a problem <laughs> for me. Well, what a dream though to say. Yeah. I think I feel like a little breakfast. Can I come down and mm. have a, a nosh? I know. I know. There's a. Uh, yeah, it's a great spot. I mean, the uh, I think the residences will be finished uh, next year, and wow. that, uh, the hotel is just stunning. So it's uh, well, and the idea of being able to go down and have a a lovely dinner. Yep, or a cocktail, With, or both. Or well, that's the thing, because you won't get arrested on the elevator. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you might. <laughs> you might. Well, that's true. So tell me about your uh, fishing club, West Coast Fishing Club. Mm -hmm. yeah, What's I, going on I, there? I know you them. give back to charity a lot. Yeah, well, it's uh, I love fishing, um, and uh, yeah, I've been working with the West Coast Fishing Club for a number of years, and uh, they started up a, a charity, um, Fishing for Kids, and uh, approached me and said, you know, would I like to help out with uh, on this? And it was a no-brainer for me. Um, there's lots of uh, friends that go on it now, and I think they've raised something like two million dollars in the, in six years, um, if not more. Really? Yeah, yeah. And there's only uh, only 50 people go. Um, it's a beautiful part of the world. Are you uh, up at Langara? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's I, ridiculous, and apparently, I have people uh, who have fished there for years who I know well. They've never taken me, yeah. but they tell me the food's great. Yeah. It's spectacular. I spend a lot of time in the uh, in Haida Gwaii and yeah. places like that. But gee, yeah, no, it's a uh, lot of fun. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, you need a vacation after you've uh, finished that mm -hmm. uh, little trip. But it's uh, four uh, four days up there. Um, you know. The fishing I, I heard last week was just ridiculous. It was something back from like the 70s where people were catching 80 fish a day. No. Um, yeah, so and they have great guides at Langara, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Uh, do you pull out a halibut once a year or what? Um, you know, it's funny, I, I get so wrapped up in the salmon fishing that I don't really end up going halibut fishing. Because it's uh, <laughs> to go mm -hmm. offshore and get uh, thrown around out there. Well, when but, a top you know. chef catches a salmon, mm. what do you do with it? Uh, you know, I, I love the bellies, and then, you know, you'll see a lot of people not use them, but they have, um, you know, the most concentrated fat, right? And so, yes. and fat equals flavor. So, and fish fat is uh, is good for you. Okay, so it's, um, for sure. Yeah, um, you know, l lightly cooking the bellies and uh, just with a little uh, chimichurri or something uh, kind of acidic mm -hmm. and um, you know, something very simple anyway. Sure. Yeah. And you get all your essential fatty acids. Yes. Don't you? Along with what are those called again? Ranks? Ramps. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> How nice They're to good. see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, for sure. I'll come by. I'll come by and uh, take another tour with you. Good. Okay, great. David Hawksworth, and he is the executive chef at Hawksworth in the uh, Rosewood. Is it the Rosewood Hotel, Georgia? The or Rosewood, the Rosewood Hotel, Georgia. Georgia Hotel. Rosewood Hotel, Georgia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.